Yo, I'll be doing a transmission on a 2010 Toyota Camry. I'm going to start by taking off as much of this stuff as I can with a 10 millimeter, a screwdriver, and a pair of pliers, starting with the negative battery terminal. A little plastic tab on the back of this holding these wires on that doesn't seem like it's made to come off. Oh yeah, okay, yeah, I tried to take it off and it just broke right off the box. There are some 12 and 14 millimeter grounds here. And there's some wire looms with brackets on them that got 12 millimeters on them. And like these two looms have 12 millimeters on them and they're underneath the looms, but if you just bend these brackets just a little bit, you can get at the bolts. And I can take this and peel it back. 12 millimeter on this. And this just unclips. This solenoid wire for the starter, you just push it in. Two 14 millimeters on this starter, I'm going to take that out. I think there's four bell housing bolts on the top. There's 17s and I think there's one 14 millimeter that's hiding too. I got this bracket here, I don't like it. It's kind of in my way, 10 millimeters. Oh. I got a shift cable here. There's a few different ways I can take this off, but I'm just gonna take the whole arm off from the transmission. <laughs> 12 millimeter on that. Give this thing a bunch of wiggles and pull up on it. And I got a wire loom here I can take off. I just push this down and Pull out. I'm gonna persuade it with a screwdriver. I got a wire loom here. These are kind of fun. I just pull up on this little tab. I can pop this out. That way I don't have to unbolt it. I could do that with all of these too, but I'd rather unbolt them. Two 12 millimeters on this shift cable bracket. Now that I got that out, there's a 14 millimeter. It's buried way down there. See that? And uh, I can get a wrench on it like this, take it off that way. I have a module here I gotta deal with. Big old wire loom on it. And there is a tab on the back of it. You just pull on it and um, you just pull it all the way back and this thing comes out. There it goes. There's your little tab right there. 21 millimeters. These are supposed to be tens. I got some plastic clips here. You pop the centers out. And these come out. Super fun junk. Oh my. Oh my, oh, wow, what next, I don't want to do this anymore, yeah. I'm going to get these axles out next, um, these are 12.30 millimeters, these center nuts, these are 17 millimeter, there's three of these. I'm just going to get in here with a pry bar and try to pull down on this. I put a drain pan down just in case it feels like losing transmission fluid, it shouldn't. I got a big pry bar I just put in between the axle and the transmission. To give it a pop. I think I read in a manual once they said you take a screwdriver and pop this clip out and take the axle out that way. 
They usually don't ever come out though on the rust belt because this bearing is rusted into this cage so bad that they never move. Sometimes you can beat on these and torch them and hammer it on them all day and they don't, they don't come out. They're just rusted in so bad. That came out amazingly enough. I don't have any faith at all that this is going to come out, but I'm going to give it a try. I'm just going to use an air hammer on it. And it doesn't move. That thing's rusted in just like the rest of them. The joke's on me. You read a manual on how to get this out, and when you're in the rust belt and this thing's over 10 years old, it isn't what it is. If I take a torch to the thing, I'll just take the chance of wrecking the bearing and the axle. And uh, I can't take these bolts out and slide it out either because there's pins in here and it, it, it won't allow it to come out. I've tried that before to a gazillion times. So what I do, I'm not saying you should do this. A lot of times they just come out like magic. But since this has never been out before, it won't. So... Like I say, I'm not recommending doing this, but this is what I do. I just make a cut right here because it loosens up this bearing in this cage. And then after I put the axle back in, I'm just going to break up my welder and weld it back up. When you start seeing a lot of sparks, you know you hit the bearing. Now I should be able to just get in here with a chisel and crack this open. Chisel and an air hammer. I saw it move. Now this thing should come out. Big dumb thing. Big dumb rusty thing. As you can see, I still have a little bit on the back side, which is cool. When I put that back in, I'm just going to weld a bead right on here. It'll weld real nice. I'm going to get this down pipe off next, and I'm going to start with the rustiest bolts. They're supposed to be 14 millimeter, but not anymore. So I'm just going to use whatever six-point sock it'll fit, pound it on, try to get them off, and i got to use a map gas and get these glowing red first. Fancy stuff. Oh yeah. I got this oxygen sensor on this downpipe I need to take off. There's a tab right here I need to push in. These two little buckets of glory are the same way. They're supposed to be 12 millimeters and uh, they're not anymore. So I'm going to map gas them and it... Looks like, it looks like I can pound an 11 millimeter out of these and get them off. There's two 12 millimeters on here and these will actually be 12 millimeters. I got two more bolts on this down pipe, they're 14 millimeters. I'm gonna drain this transmission next. This is a six millimeter hex. There's a leveler in this thing I'm going to try to get out. It's a tube that sits up inside the pan. Same thing, 6 millimeter. I'm going to stick it way up in there. And I should be able to grab it and just unscrew the thing. I'm going to leave this pipe out and keep it. Now I'm back up top side. I can go ahead and get these transmission lines off. There's three bolts on this transmission cooler and they're all 12 millimeters. 17 millimeter on this mount. I had to set up one of these to support the back side of the engine. I just found a spot on the back of the head right there. Bolted it down and wrapped a chain around here. I got extra chain. I had to bolt two chains together because it wasn't long enough because I went all the way down down there. There's a bracket for the exhaust. I took the bolt out and found a longer bolt and just put it up there. And then I uh, I put a bolt right here too just to just because I wanted to tighten it up a little and 
stuff. There's two covers under the wheel well. Um, I got to get out both of them on each side. And a clippy thing. He's got the little button so you just push him in. You should hear it click and then they come out. When you put this in, you got to put the push this button back out, stick it in the hole and stick it in like that. So I have to take this dust cover off. And there's a there's bolts behind here. And then I put a 22 millimeter on the crankshaft. These are all 14 millimeters. Okay, there's six of those. Looks like I got all of them out. Flywheel turns, the torque converter don't. There's four bell housing bolts on here. They're all 14 millimeter. Oh, I can't get this one out. I gotta get this bracket off. 12 millimeter on the bracket. Oh, I, I'm gonna leave this one loose. I'm gonna leave all this bolted together until I get this thing prepped and ready to come out. Okay, I got all four of those bell housing bolts out. This one's loose. And um, I just put a screwdriver up here and pried on it a little and I could see it was moving, but I'm missing one. There's still one more I gotta get at right there. I think I can manage to get this out with a three foot extension and a swivel socket. Upon thinking too much, I realized I had to put one of these threaded rods on here too. I just wrapped it around the dog bone, like so. Because on the front, this mount's going to be the only thing holding up the front of the engine. So when I take the cradle out, this is going to like go down and swing out. So that should hold it up there pretty good. I need to unbolt the rack and pinion from the cradle, but before I do that, there's a couple of lines. There's one here and one buried over here. A couple of bolts for the return line. On these rack and pinion bolts, the nuts are 17 millimeter and a bolt on the back side is a 19. These sway bar bushings got to come out next so I can get the bolts out for the rack. And uh, this way I won't have to unbolt the link pins either. I have both of these sway bar bushings unbolted so I can kind of swing this over to get these rack and pinion bolts out. Ugh. I got myself a long bungee cord and just wrapped it around here a couple of times and there's a hole up in the wheel well. I just wrapped the rack and pinion and the sway bar together all the way up to the other side like so. Kind of cheesy but it shouldn't go anywhere. Two mounts, one on the engine side and one on the transmission side that are 19 millimeter. To get this cradle out, I have to take all four of these bolts out on the corners. There's two 14 millimeters and one 19, I think. I'm gonna loosen all four corners up and tighten them back up one at a time. So I want to get this plate out of my way. I'm just going to take them out and put them right back in again. Ugh, that was gross. I just got splurged with some kind of nasty yuck. War paint. Time for me to go wash my face. I have four jack stands under the cradle now, so I can get these four bolts out. And I'm just going to gradually lift up the car, and hopefully this cradle will stay right where it's supposed to be. This transmission's got a nice flat bottom on it. 
Oh, I just put a strap around the transmission. I'm just going to take it out real slow. Take that one bolt out of the bottom of the bell housing and take it out real slow. I found the problem. The bushing for the transmission for this torque converter is stuck on the converter and the seal is burnt to a crisp. There's the bushing right there. That's supposed to be in here. The spring for the seal is just laying down in the transmission and all the rubber for the seal is just burnt to a crisp. And that's why you put a dipstick tube on a transmission. They say, oh, you never have to check it. Well, if it's low, you do. Stupid. I've never seen anything like that. They took the filter out of it. They left the two bolts for the filter in here. I went out and got a tranny filter kit. The kit didn't come with an O-ring. There's an O-ring right here. So I had to take the other transmission apart to get the O-ring because it wasn't in this one, obviously. I put a little silicone paste on it. That way it'll slide up here really nice without causing me a fuss. And uh, these holes don't line up. I had to order the filter. Apparently there's an 18 and a 19 bolt pan and they they didn't ask me which and gave me the wrong one. So for right now I'm just going to replace these seals. I got some crazy apparatus on my hoist to make sure it doesn't fall and if it does it's saved by something else kind of a thing. You always want to watch it with these junkyard clowns too. They they put this bracket on here to make sure that the torque converter doesn't fall out. And um, I actually measured the old torque converter when I took it out. And from this tab to, um, to the flat on the uh, bell housing, it was at three quarters of an inch. So this one's under a half an inch. This gap right here. So this torque converter fell out and they didn't put it all the way back in. So you can't put it in like this. If you put it in like this, you're going to wreck the pump. I got to replace a seal on this anyways. I can tell they took the torque converter out because there's a bunch of fluid all over here. It's all wet. Hey, look at that. There's no bushing stuck to the torque converter. Well, this is what I'm talking about, these two grooves. If it's not in all the way, it's not going to be engaged in the oil pump drive. I can look in here and see them too. They're, they're facing this way. You can hear that little bit of funky. That's because it's barely hitting the back of the bell housing. I can't get my fingers back in here at all. I'm right at three quarters of an inch, almost an inch, so I know it's in all the way. I'm going to bend this bracket a bunch. There. Now I have a bunch of extra junk I need to take off of this. Okay, I got the right filter this time. Put the O-ring on it. Put some silicone paste on it. I'm sure it seals real good even with the used O-ring. I don't know why, but I got two different transmission kits and both of them didn't have the O-ring with it. I would imagine these bolts are torqued to about six to eight foot-pounds, but I'm just going to do them by hand. I don't know for sure because I haven't looked it up. I clean the other pan. I put the gasket on it with all the bolts to hold the gasket in place and I put that tube back in there. I can put this on my tranny jack and get it back in the car now. I have both of the alignment pins in and I started the two bolts on the very top. They started really nice by hand. So I'm going to just start a couple of these bottom ones by hand too. 
I put the cradle on jack stands and just to make my life a little easier I took the cradle bolts and I put a piece of string on them and just made some makeshift plumb bobs I got four of them one on every four corners that way I got this thing pretty close to lined up so hopefully it won't be too much of a pain in the butt to just drop the car down on it Well, now I can just start slamming this thing together. And that's how you foil Toyota's ridiculous rusted stuck ideas. Yeah, this poor lady got a transmission flush like a... I don't know, she said not too long. She said it wasn't working right ever since she got the flush and then all of a sudden it stopped working. And I got a feeling they didn't top this thing off right because I only took about three and a half quarts out of that transmission. The torque converter was completely dried up and um, there was nothing in this tranny cooler either. I ran some brake cleaner through it and blew it out and there, there was absolutely nothing in here. It was totally empty. So... I'm pretty sure she was running on a dry transmission for a long time. Can't be sure though. Can't go blaming people if I don't know what I'm talking about, right? Just speculation. I just want to make sure this this shift cable doesn't come out of park if I tug on it and it stays in park so I know the adjustments good gotta get this downpipe on next and there's all kinds of nasty rusty slag on here I'm gonna get off of the chip and hammer Got a couple of gaskets for the thing. Now that I have everything put together except for a couple of splash shields and the tires, I'm going to take this 24 millimeter off of the transmission here. And this is your fill plug. This transmission calls for almost seven quarts of oil when it's empty. And I have seven quarts, so I'm hoping it's going to be a little overfilled. I got to get this thing overfilled and run it to operating temperature. It's got to be over 105 degrees because transmission fluid has thermal expansion. So after 105 degrees, it's about fully expanded. I bought the factory fluid for it, ATF WS, and I got a fluid pump for it. I'm actually cheating a little bit. I got a bottle of Max Light too I'm going to put in here. Now I just need to make sure this car is perfectly level and I got to run it until it gets up over 105 degrees. And then I got to pull this plug. I got to go through all the gears and make sure the transmission, everything in the transmission is all filled up and then pull this plug after it gets to 105 degrees. and. Hopefully this thing will work. Well, it seems like all the gears are working. I'm just going to let it run for a little bit. All right. I had it in drive and reverse the whole time while it was on the lift. Just to make sure it's all cool. 
I'm at 114 degree transmission temperature, so it's warm enough. Transmission's in park right now. There it is. Well, all things considered, this car seemed to go together pretty good. I think it's going to be fine. Another job well done. Okay, bye.